how to find the side length in a right triangle. This tutorial assumes you're familiar with the Pythagorean theorem and sine cosine tangent. And the goal of the tutorial is twofold. One, to know which formula to use, sine cosine tangent versus Pythagorean theorem, to calculate a side length. And the second goal is to be able to then use that formula to actually get that side length. This tutorial can be found on our website, mathwarehouse.com slash right try side, where you'll find many other practice problems, free worksheets, and some neat other tools. So by the end of today, you should be able to look at the triangle on the left, the triangle on the right, and you should clearly know what steps you need to take to find the side length whose value is x. Before we um, try these problems, I want to just take a. I want us to recap real quickly uh, the two formulas I talked about before: um, Pythagorean theorem and the uh, sine cosine tangent. So just we're starting from the basics here. If you remember, in a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the largest side, and it's always opposite the right angle. And if we call If we call this side B, the hypotenuse C, and this side A, you should know the Pythagorean theorem, hopefully you should know, is A squared plus B squared is C squared. This works for any right triangle, right? <clears throat> also for right triangles, you can take advantage of Sokotoa sine cosine tangent right and so Coteau was just an easy way to remember the trig ratios that are always true for right triangles um, sine the sine of an angle for instance the sine of B <coughs> is opposite over hypotenuse cosine of B is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan of B is opposite over adjacent all right so that's just a quick refresh on the two core formulas of this lesson. So what we, our goal today is, <clears throat> is to know how to use those two formulas to find the side length x. Now, let's take a second, maybe we'll look at them again real quickly and notice that there is one difference. In uh, the Pythagorean theorem, you're dealing with three side lengths, no angles. And so the Pythagorean theorem has nothing to do with angles. On the other hand, sine cosine tangent um, does involve an angle measurement, one angle measurement, and two side lengths. So when we're trying to find a side length in a triangle, if the information we're given involves an angle, we're probably going to have to use Sokotoa. And let's look at some specific examples of that. If we have to find the value of x on the left side triangle, there really is only one option, and it's the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem, remember, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this is the hypotenuse, right? And <clears throat> let's think about what we know. We know two sides. We're always trying to find one side, so that's going to be the goal throughout this. If we know two sides, we and we want to find one side, this is the Pythagorean theorem we should use because it's one equation and it involves three sides. So you can say, you just have to now substitute this into the formula. We've got 3, which is a leg. Remember, these are the legs. So you can say 3 squared plus, I'll, I'll put x here, x squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Right. So now, as you can see, we have one equation, one unknown. This can be this can be solved. We just have to solve for x, right? So, nine plus x equals twenty-five. Subtract nine from both sides, and you get I'm sorry, it's x squared. You get x squared equals sixteen. Take the square root of sixteen, and you have four. So let's take a quick recap of what lent it why this lends itself to the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem involves three side lengths. If you are given two and you're trying to find the third one, you can just substitute the values in and solve an equation, right? Because you have one equation, one unknown at this point. <clears throat> if you 
like, I don't know, for some reason you wanted to try to use sine, cosine, tangent, the first thing you're going to realize that's a problem is that you don't have um, an angle that you can easily work with. Because you're not going to want to take the cosine of 90 or anything. I mean, you do have this 90 degree angle here, but to use Sokotoa, you need to know one of these angles. We don't know it. Okay, so no two sides. We want to find a third right triangle, Pythagorean theorem. Now let's think about this triangle here. We know one side, and we know one angle. So let's just say you wanted to try to use the Pythagorean theorem. You've got the problem, right? Because you would say x squared, which we're trying to find, plus 14 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. We don't know the hypotenuse, and we don't know x, so we have one equation and two unknowns that cannot be solved. So Pythagorean theorem is out when you know one side and one angle, and that leaves Sokotoa. Is there any of those trig ratios that we can use to find x? Well, let's think about it. It would obviously involve the angle 67. And what do we know? We know the adjacent side, and we want to know the opposite side. So you can use the tangent ratio, tangent of 67 equals the opposite. Just remember tangent equals opposite over adjacent and that's going to be x over 14. <coughs> Sorry, that's a 14 down there. So to find x you just cross multiply from tan of 67 times 14 is x. And if we, if we round that to the nearest integer, you've got th x equals 33. Alright, so quick recap. You know one side and one angle. You can quickly set up one of the trig ratios. In this case, we use the 67 degree angle. Of course, you could really use this angle too, 90 minus 67, but why do the extra step? So you've got tan of 67 equals opposite over adjacent. And then you just solve for the side. All right, so you know one side and one angle, it's Sokotoa time. You know two sides, Pythagorean theorem time. All right, so let's try some more practice. <clears throat> let's find the value of x. In both cases, we're trying to find the hypotenuse. And in case you forget, Let's just go back to what we know. In the left side here, we know two sides. And on the right side here, we know one side, one angle. If you remember from the prior two problems, if you know two sides <coughs> and a right triangle, it's slam dunk, Pythagorean theorem. You just set up the Pythagorean theorem and substitute in. Remember, C is the hypotenuse. So we're going to say 14 squared plus 48 squared equals x squared. And we're going to solve for x. 14 squared is 196. And 48 squared is 2,304 equals x squared. And they add up to 2,500. And if you take the square root of that, you're going to get 50. Right, so x equals the square root of 2,500 or 50. You know one side and one angle. <coughs> All you have to decide is which trig ratio to use. And you just ask yourself which of the ratios involve the opposite side and the hypotenuse. And that's the sine. So the sine of 67 equals the opposite over the hypotenuse or 24 over x. Sine of 67 equals 24 over x. So here we cross multiply, bring the x up. I'll do it step by step because I know students sometimes find solving for the denominator a little a bit of a pain. Just bring the x up and then divide both sides by sine of 67 and x equals 24 divided by sine of 67 
which uh, or I'm going to round to the nearest integer will give us 26. All right, we're just now implementing our rule. If we know two sides, Pythagorean theorem. If we know one side and one angle, Sokotoa. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. If you would like to practice other problems, we've got several other problems similar to this on our website, mathwarehouse.com, and some other free neat things on that webpage. Thank you very much.